You know, Pete, while we still have Phil, I, I note that you sold your Rivian stock. Mm -hmm. Now, we had your brother on yesterday yeah. who was out of his calls. And remember, I had said mm -hmm. he bought those in the open market. You had an allocation on the IPO. Why now sell the stock? Sure. I was very fortunate because I did get an allocation from the IPO. So when you go back and that price is at 78 bucks, that, that feels pretty good. That gave me room to be able to trade this stock. I've always been in the idea that this is a trade. This is not an investment. You look at the multiples there, you know, you, there, there's nothing to look at there. And Phil will tell you a lot of the positives, and there are obviously some negatives as well. They're probably going to have to raise cash again as they're trying to build out some of these facilities. And that's fine. That's something that we've seen in the past. We've seen Tesla and others do that. But what bothered me most uh, for me, from my perspective, and this, this goes back to what Chris was talking about and what Bryn was talking about, about implied volatility, Scott. And I was telling you early on, I said, as soon as they bring on options, I'm going to be selling at the money calls against this position. It's exactly what I've been doing. And I've been continuing to do that. Here's the one problem. We started off with implied volatilities. In other words, how much premium is in those options? It was close to 200 or as high as 250. Right now, very similar to Tesla, the implied volatility, believe it or not, has been coming down despite the fact that the stock has been coming down. So as the stock has gone from 170 all the way to call it mid-90s, you look at that implied volatility, it's now trading very close to 100. So I'm not getting what I like for the risk reward. Before that, I was getting double what people would be getting now. So I just made the determination. I like what I did. I like the position. I liked all the premium I was able to take out of this stock. Yeah. But I'm not getting the same types of premium that I was before. Hey, Phil, you know, Jonas over at Morgan Stanley says of this one, it's still the one. Uh, but there's more ramp risk, mm -hmm. right? Supply is an issue. Uh, but sure. what about what, what Pete just said about the balance sheet, needing more cash? Do you know enough about that situation that, that you can opine on that? I don't think they – well, I, I know enough to know they don't need it immediately. And, they've, you know, look, they committed $5 billion to build a second plant uh, east of Atlanta for production. It won't be open until 2024. Do I think that by 2024 there will be likely another capital raise of some sort? Probably because they're going to have to increase their production again. I mean, they have big plans for the future. I think the most interesting story here, Scott, and what Rivian is really uh, an early indicator that people should keep in mind, you have an industry where you have so many automakers, whether startups like Rivian or established automakers, who have said, we are building X number of electric vehicles over the next five years or seven years or however long. There's not the battery capacity there. And you know what? I'm not sure there's going to be that battery capacity for some time. That is the big scramble that's going on right, right now. And that's going to ultimately make people say, okay, let's dial back our expectations, not just for Rivian, but for other companies in terms of how quickly they'll be able to ramp up production of EVs. I got you. Phil, the best. Rolls with everything.